Hello, today we're going to look at Unit 7, Day 5, Kites. Before we get into today's notes, I want to finish the rectangle notes because, or sorry, the square and rhombus notes because we missed two important problems from those notes. Coordinate geometry. Given each set of vertices, determine whether parallelogram BEFG is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. Name all that apply. The first thing we want to do is we want to graph our points. B is at negative 9, 1. E is at 2, 3. F falls off the graph a little bit at 12, negative 2. And G is at 1, negative 4. Once we have them graphed, we want to remember that we are told that we have a parallelogram. So I know those four properties. My opposite sides are parallel and congruent. My opposite angles are congruent. My same side angles are supplementary. And my diagonals bisect each other will all be true for this figure. When I'm determining if this is a rhombus, I really just need to know, are my four sides congruent? I know opposite sides are congruent, but are all four congruent? Let's start by looking at how far is it from point B to point E. If I turn this into a little right triangle, where I go up 2 and over 11, I can see that BE would be a hypotenuse. So in my square root for the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to add 11 squared plus 2 squared. When I put that in my calculator, I'm going to get 11.1803. That's how far it is from B to E. Now, since my figure is a parallelogram, I know the side across from that is also 11.1803. From here, I can now find BG and EF. The distance from B to G, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it into a little right triangle where I'm going down 5 and over 10. BG is still the hypotenuse, so I'm still going to be adding inside my square root 10 squared plus 5 squared. When I put that in my calculator, I also get 11.1803. So that's how far it is from B to G. Since this is a parallelogram, I know that's how far it is also from E to F. I have now shown that all four sides of this figure are 11.1803. So yes, we can say this is a rhombus. Now we need to decide, is it a rectangle? If it's a rectangle, my consecutive sides will intersect perpendicularly. And we know that on a graph, lines that are perpendicular, perpendicular have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. So one will be positive, the other will be negative, and the fraction itself, the rise over the run, will be flipped upside down. So let's find the slope from B to E. I know my rise is 2 and I'm running 11. So my slope from B to E is 2 over 11. My slope from B to G, I have to rise down 5 and run 10. So I'm going to be rising a negative 5 and running 10. That reduces to negative 1 half. My slopes are opposites. One's positive, the other's negative, but they're not reciprocal. One is 2 over 11, and the other is negative 1 half over 2. When I flip them over, they don't make the same value. So this is not a rectangle. In order to be a square, it needs to be both a rhombus and a rectangle, so this is also not a square. Let's look at the next example like this one. Again, we're still looking at the rhombus square notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph my parallelogram using the points provided. From here, I'm going to remember that they told me it is a parallelogram. So I know my opposite sides are congruent and parallel. And I'm going to test to see if this is a rhombus. Are all my sides the same? I'm going to start 
doing the same thing I did last time. From B to E, if I turn that into a triangle and I count, I have to go six units and six units. Well, if this is a right isosceles triangle, it has to be 45, 45, 90, leg, leg, leg squared of two. I don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem. I know this is gonna be six squared of two. You could still use the Pythagorean theorem and do the square root of six squared plus six squared, and you'll get a, a decimal equivalent, a rounded decimal equivalent of six squared of two. All right, so BE is six squared of two, and the side across from it, since it's a parallelogram, is also six squared of two. Let's look at from B to G. Again, I'm gonna make this to where BG is a hypotenuse of a right triangle. I count up and I have six units. I count to the right and I have six units. So this is another isosceles right triangle. So it's gonna be leg, leg, leg squared of two. These are both six squared of two. So this is a rhombus. Is it a rectangle? Let's check our slopes. When I look at my slope from B to E, I know I have to go up six and I have to run back negative six. So even though I wrote a positive six on my graph, I'm running backwards, so it's a negative slope, and I can see that line is going downhill. So this is a slope of negative one. My slope from B to G, I'm going up six, and I'm going over to the right six, so they're both positive directions, which means my slope is a positive one. These are opposites, one's positive, one's negative, but are they reciprocals? Well, one over one, when I flip that over, would still be one over one. So yes, that is a 90 degree angle. I know it's a parallelogram, so my opposite angles are congruent. And my same side interior angles are supplementary. So if one's 90, the other is. So yes, this is a rectangle. Because it's a rectangle and it's a rhombus, this is a square. So hopefully that finishes up your notes from the other day. Now let's get into kites. Today we're gonna to discover the properties of a geometric kite. I will find angle measures and segment lengths in kites. A kite is a quadrilateral, four sides, interior angle sum of 360, that has two pairs of opposite sides, non-congruent. What that means is if I know what one side is, the side across from it has to be something different. It has two pairs, that's one pair. Here's the other pair. Opposite sides are not congruent, non-congruent. And we're going to have two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So these two sides that are consecutive, meaning they're one right after each other, they are the same exact length. But I have two pair, so these are also exactly the same length. Now, just so that we can have some good naming conventions and we can all be on the same page as to the different parts of the kite, when I refer to the tail of the kite, I'm referring to one end where the two longer sides come together that are congruent. That's gonna be the tail of your kite. And the other end where the two other congruent segments come together, I call that the top of the kite. So whether my kite is facing sideways like this one or up and down or down and up, however it's facing, top and tail are always gonna be the angles where the two congruent sides touch each other. The other two angles where the sides are not congruent come together, I just call those the sides of the kite. There are three special properties for a kite. The first one is one pair of opposite side angles are congruent, specifically the side to side angles. So when I look at my kite, I wanna make sure I identify my tail and my top so that I can find my sides. Those side angles will have the exact same measurement. It 
It's important to note that it only applies to your side to side angles. Your top and your tail angles are not congruent. So my top angle is going to be marked differently and my tail angle will be marked differently. The second special property for a kite is that my diagonals are perpendicular. So that means when I draw them in, they will intersect each other at a 90 degree angle. And my last special property for a kite is my top to tail diagonal bisects the top and tail angles and the other diagonal. So that top to tail diagonal bisects the top and the tail angles. So I'm going to label my top and my tail and draw in that diagonal. It's going to bisect that top angle into two congruent angles and the tail angle into two congruent angles. Notice they're marked differently. The top is marked with two arc marks each and the tail is marked three arc mark each because the top angle, the total, is different from the total tail angle. But your top to tail diagonal doesn't just bisect those angles, it also bisects the other diagonal. So my side to side diagonal will also be cut in half. You have two special notes still written on your note packet. The side to side angles are not bisected. So these angles here on the side, they're two different angles. Because my side angles are congruent, as we saw in property number one, we know that they're going to be divided the same but not equally on both sides. The second important note down there is that the top and tail diagonal is not bisected. So your side to side is bisected into two equal pieces, but the other one is going to be two different pieces. All right, let's see if we can apply these properties. Example one, in kite ABCD, the measure of angle DAB equals 54 degrees, and the measure of angle CDF equals 52 degrees. Find each measure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my figure with the tail, the top, the side, and the other side. Then I'm going to notice that I'm working with angles here. So I'm going to mark all the angle properties that I know. First, starting with that I have a 90 degree angle at the center. I know the side angles are the same across from each other, but not the same as each other. And I know my top and my tail diagonals are bisected into congruent pieces. But again, my top angles are not the same as my tail angles. All right, so that's everything marked. Let's see what information they gave us. They told me the measure of angle DAB is 54 degrees. Let's find DAB. So from D to A to B, that angle there they told me is 54 degrees. I know it is being divided in half by that top to tail diagonal. So 54 divided in half, each of those angles is 27 degrees. Okay. They also told me the measure of angle CDF is 52 degrees. Let's find CDF. So C to D, D to F. All right, we have 52 degrees right here. I know that's going to be the same as across that diagonal to the other side. All right, let's keep going. What else do we need to know? I have a right angle there. And then I can use, again, we spent a long time on right triangles. If I look at that right triangle, I can see I've already used that right angle and the 52 degrees. So I've got 142 degrees taken up in this triangle out of 180. So left for that last angle is 38 degrees. 
Now if that angle is 38 degrees, then the one right next to it is also 38 degrees. Okay. Now that right angle, I'm just going to swing that right around. And let's see if we can find the other angle at the side. If you'd like, pause the video and see if you can find it on your own. All right, so what I'm going to do, I know I've used 90 degrees and 27 degrees, so I've used a total of 117 degrees. When I take that away from 180, that's going to leave me with 63 degrees. Remember, that's going to be the same measurement as the angle across from it. So I think the only other angle we haven't found in this figure is that angle where the letter F is labeling that, so I can just, if I want to add that in, that's also going to be a 90 degree angle. We found each angle measure in this figure. Let's look at example two. Erin is making a kite based on the pattern below. She wants to add a trim around the border. How much trim does Erin need to cover the edges of the kite? So I'm looking to get around the border. I'm going to first identify my tail and my top and then I know my others are sides. If I'm looking at around the border, that means I don't need to know what, how big the angles are. I just need to know how long the sides are. I know that top to tail diagonal divides the side to side diagonal. And the whole thing we have been told is 64 inches. So each little piece must be 32. Now, I want around the border. So that's not part of the border of this kite. But if I want to find this piece here, which is part of the border, I know this is a right triangle because my diagonals intersect at a perpendicular angle. That piece that I'm looking for is a hypotenuse for that right triangle. So in my square root, I'm going to add. My two side lengths of that right triangle are 52 and 32. I'm going to square them. When I put this in my calculator, I get that that hypotenuse is 61.057 inches. Now, remember you have two consecutive sides that come together at the tail. So that means the other piece is also 61.05 inches. Okay. Take two minutes and find the other two sides with your partner. One minute remaining. Alright, let's check our answers. Hopefully you did the Pythagorean Theorem using the 32 and the 13 
they gave me this 13 right here for this side and the 32. And then from there I can see, using Pythagorean theorem, I have 34.54 inches. My question though is how much trim does Erin need to cover the edges of the kite? So to go all the way around, that's the perimeter of the kite. I need to add the 61.057 plus 61.057 plus 34.54 plus 34.54 to get my total trim needed of 191.194 inches. All right, find each angle measure in the figure below. Take three minutes and see how many you can find. Work with your neighbor if you need to. Helpful hint, add your diagonals. Two minutes remaining. One minute remaining. and stop. All right, the first thing I did is I drew in that top to tail diagonal because I know it's gonna divide that 44 into 22 degrees and 22 degrees. The next thing I did was I drew in my side to side diagonal so I could find that 90 degree angle. Then I looked at this right triangle here where I've used 90 degrees and 22 degrees, leaving me with 68 degrees. I know that's going to be the same measurement across the other side of my kite. Then if that whole angle was given to me as 113 degrees and I've used 68 degrees, that leaves me with 45 for the top of my side angle, which means the top of the other side angle is also 45 degrees. I have a 90 degree angle in that top piece which means these must both be 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. All right, 
I haven't even looked to see what angles I need to find, but I found everything in there. So let's see if we found them all. The first one, the measure of angle EFG. EFG is 45 and 45 together, so 90 degrees. FGH is 45 and 68 together, or if I look across the way, I can see it's 113 was given to me. EHF, EHF is 22 degrees. GFH, GFH is 45 degrees. FEG, FEG is also 45 degrees. And EGH, EGH is 68 degrees. So by having them all filled out, it makes it real easy to then go in and fill out those angles that we were trying to find. All right, just reviewing today's objective. Today we will discover the properties of geometric kite. I will find angle measures and segment lengths in kites. You can show me that you completed today's objective, finding angle measures and segment lengths in kites, by completing independent practice 7.5 which will be due Monday. There is tutoring after school on Monday, so if you have any questions, please make sure you drop by or ask at the end of the notes on Monday. Thank you so much for watching.